We needed to bring this out of Washington, D.C. We wanted federal officials to meet with communities and actually see some of the challenges that folks are having on the ground. Um, and we wanted to have real conversation like we wanted benefit to equal dollars. We wanted benefit to equal policy and practice. And so that's what this moment is about. We work statewide, nationally, and internationally, mostly on chemical exposure issues. We work to stop harmful extractive industries. Uh, also work on military toxic contamination to hold polluters accountable and to prevent further harm. So we work a lot on public health issues. We work with communities to do community-based participatory research and also advocacy, organizing, and policy work. The unbalance that we're feeling globally, we're feeling in Karen Fairbanks, the climate change shifts where we're seeing communities of crop very close to us here in the interior um, that are, we're not able to do subsistence fishing anymore. Um, salmon runs uh, are being limited, right? Salmon fishing for subsistence purposes are being limited. That's causing um, pain and grief and, um, and food scarcity for communities um, all along, on the, on the outskirts of here. So uh, all of that can be exacerbated by climate change and then we continue to take the extraction of the goals. We learn from our parents and grandparents and leadership of how these chemical exposures can affect their children's ability to learn. How can we pass on our languages, our creation story, our songs and dances, our tradition and cultures if our children can't learn? It's alarming to learn that the grandson I'm raising, raising has a higher body burden of flame retards than adults. These are all preventable. They're safer solutions. It's going to take all of us, civil society, to make meaningful changes.